It is not known how or when humans discovered that the Earth is magnetic. It is generally accepted, however, that the Chinese designed the earliest compasses sometime in the 11th century. You will often read that Marco Polo brought the compass back to Europe for around the year 1295 after visiting China. While that is likely true, I suspect that primitive Far East compasses were probably already spreading throughout the world due to trade. It is well known that African and Middle Eastern traders interacted with the Far East long before Europeans went there. But that's a whole other topic. The fact is that despite refinements along the way, the modern compasses we use today have not changed significantly over the centuries. Hey guys, Smelling Roses here. I'm going to do my best to keep this video short and simple. This is a direct response to a couple of questions from some of my subscribers. We're going to be taking a look at basic compass operation as it pertains to land navigation. So what you are looking at here are just a few examples of the many different types of compasses. There are many different kinds, all with different features and different uses. And it's really impossible for me to get too detailed into that. But what you will need to make sure is that you obtain a quality compass with the features that you need. And you weigh that, of course, against the cost of the compass. Uh, you don't want to spend tons of money for something that you will not use or you will not utilize all the features of the compass. And likewise, you don't want to just buy a cheap compass that does not have key features that you will need. That, of course, is a very personal decision and you will have to base that on your own needs and circumstances. But generally speaking, for land navigation in conjunction with a map, you're going to want a base plate type compass. Keep in mind that the Earth's magnetic field varies around the globe, so a compass that I may use here in North America uh, may not be accurate if I take it to South America, Africa, or Australia, for example. Make sure that your compass is designed for use in your area or in the area where you will be operating. Learning how to properly use a topographic map is perhaps the single most important skill to master for wilderness navigation. If you have a good map and know how to use it, you may not even require a compass. You guys know that I like to hike a lot of miles, even off trail in wild areas. And to be honest with you guys, uh, my compass rarely comes out of my pack. The most effective use of a compass will be in flat or featureless terrain, perhaps areas with dense vegetation, uh, rain, heavy fog, or perhaps a whiteout conditions during a snowstorm. Uh, navigating at night or any situation where your visibility is limited and you have difficulty observing the terrain around you. In those situations a compass will be invaluable and you'll also need to learn to trust it. So I think most of us understand that the point of a compass is for the magnetic needle to point towards north. What we need to realize and point out here, though, is that the needle on your compass actually points to magnetic north and not true north. Magnetic north is currently near Baffin Island in Canada, and it shifts about five miles to the northwest each year. The difference between true north and magnetic north is called declination 
or it can also be referred to as the angle of declination. If you imagine a triangle where one point of the triangle is magnetic north, another point is true north, and the third point is your location, the angle of the triangle is the angle of declination. I don't want to get bogged down by detail in this particular video, but I really want to urge you to become familiar with declination and how to adjust your compass for it or adjust your calculations for declination. If you guys want, I can do a separate video and uh, try to do a demonstration on declination. You guys can let me know if that's something you're interested in. Uh, in some cases, uh, allowing for declination is not really a big factor, especially if you will be navigating for a very short distance. Uh, also, if the declination or the degree of declination is not that great in your area, it, will have, it may have a minimal impact on your navigation. But in other cases, uh, just being off by a degree or two can really put you way off course. So declination is something that we should not ignore. Okay guys, what you are looking at here is a very typical base plate style compass that is ideal for land navigation. Uh, my primary compass happens to be a Sunto M3. However, there are various uh, quality brands and styles and uh, each one is a little bit different but they all have some key features in common uh, mainly the base plate itself they will generally have some sort of directional arrows and this part that turns is often referred to as the bezel and of course the magnetic needle I just want to point out those terms because you may hear me refer to those as we get into using this compass but don't focus too much on the particular brand uh, most all compasses will share these features in common you'll also note that on the bezel you have the degrees we'll get into that later and you'll also notice inside uh, this particular compass has sort of an arrow between two lines other compasses may have a box some may have some type of chevron symbol but um, you'll see what that is used for in a moment but that's a very important feature to note on your compass okay guys so the most basic use of the compass is to determine which direction is north and we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that you can see that i have turned the bezel so that north is in agreement with the direction arrows on my base plate and what I'm going to want to do is simply rotate. I'm holding the compass in front of me and I'm going to turn my entire body until the magnetic needle lines up inside the arrow that's inside the bezel, the one I was pointing out earlier. Now you see how the magnetic needle is inside the two lines or inside the red arrow inside my bezel and that of course is also pointing north that means that I am now facing north as I hold the compass in front of me and you can see it moved a bit as I got the camera too close uh, any type of metal object near your compass will affect the reading so keep that in mind but what I'm doing is I simply hold the compass in front of me and I'll just demonstrate it again I'll hold the compass straight in front of me and I will turn my entire body until the magnetic needle is between the two lines or in the arrow or in the box if you will and this technique is called boxing the needle it's perhaps the most basic operation for using your compass okay let's apply that same concept and step it up to another level let's say that we're out here in the field and for whatever reason we need to know which direction is west so you can see I've turned the bezel so that west is lined up with the chevron there and in agreement with the direction arrows I've have the bezel turned to west now what I want to do is again turn my entire body so that 
the magnetic needle not lines up with west but again I want the magnetic needle to line up with those two lines in the box there in that red arrow you see what I'm doing so what have I just done I have boxed the needle I'm boxing the needle the magnetic needle is pointing towards north but my body is now facing west which is the direction I was looking for so it really is that simple in uh, finding your direction using a compass now if you're using a map and on your map you try to determine which direction you need to travel that is a slightly more advanced topic that I don't want to get into in this particular video but just for one more demonstration and for the sake of argument let's say you determine that you need to travel 60 degrees east well I simply again repeat the process I have turned the bezel so that 60 degrees is in line with my direction of travel that I'm going to need and I look down here and I see that I just need to turn my body until the magnetic needle is boxed so I've boxed the needle and I am now facing 60 degrees okay so here we just chose uh, 60 degrees as an example um, that is called your bearing when you decide okay I'm going to travel at 60 degrees east that is my bearing and that's a slightly more detailed conversation if you guys are interested we can talk about how you would determine which direction you need to travel using your map in a separate video or in comments okay guys another simple task that you're gonna want to be able to do with your compass is to get your map properly oriented now with very rare exception all maps will be printed with true north to the top of the map you will simply want to take your compass get your bezel oriented to north and we're gonna box the needle just as we did before however as we rotate the compass we're going to rotate the map as well and we're just going to turn it until we have the needle boxed and you can see my compass is facing north and my map is also facing north and it's properly oriented okay guys so obviously this subject can get way more complicated than the simple examples we have covered today but I hope this video has addressed the questions that were raised if anyone has additional questions or if you would like to see more videos on this topic of wilderness navigation please comment below and let me know let me know what types of videos you would like to see or what topics you would like for me to cover I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching I really appreciate all your support remember to like my Facebook page and you can also follow me on Twitter thanks a lot guys and as always, I'll see you on the trail.